this meeting of the Granby Board of Finance to order. It's all right, we don't need them. Sorry. 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 All right. <clears throat> Is everybody else there? Can you hear us? Sounds like everybody else went dead. We can. Uh, James, I can hear you. This is Jordan. Okay. Perfect, Jordan. Thanks. And Anna's okay. here also from the school, and John Ward is also here. Okay. First. Uh, and Kimmy. Yeah, confirm, confirm the quorum. We have all six of us here. Next item is uh, any public input limited to three minutes? Anybody? Uh, moving on, approved minutes from previous meeting of September 28th. I'll make a motion to approve. Is there a second? I'll second. Discussion? There being none, those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Abstentions? None. Statements of accounts will take up municipal for September. John, Kimmy, go ahead. Good evening, everybody. Uh, we're still in the relatively easy portion of the fiscal year uh, in regards to September. We had the first collection back in July, and the collection rate remains exactly where it uh, trends historically. We're at 56% between all of them. Uh, and. Uh, we have not seen a deflection downwards due to uh, uh, impact on the local economy by COVID. In December, we'll mail out the supplemental auto bills. So we have not received anything yet. As far as the educational money, none of that had been received from the state yet by the end of September. In regards to the non-educational state money. Uh, we've received a small pittance of it, but again, nothing's overdue. The state doesn't rush the payments out to us until late fall. John, John question. Yeah. John? Yep. Uh, yeah, 43340, the, the PSAP grant. Is that a quarter of the amount that we now expect to get, the 80? Four eighty-eight. Yes, it is. Thank you, Kimmy. Okay. I know they reduced it this year. Uh, they tightened the formula uh, and reduced it, I think, by about ten thousand dollars on us. Okay, but at this point, that. If that's the case, we should get 10,000 or so more than budgeted if, if this is a quarter. Okay. Continue. Okay. Uh, for <clears throat> intra-town revenue, nothing spectacular. Uh, town clerk fees are running at a healthy rate. We're at 52%, even though we're only finished with a quarter of the year. And that is due to the real estate activity in the town. Uh, planning or our building permits are back down to the normal level. I think we finally have seen the end of the hailstorm permits. Otherwise, everything is as we anticipated with the budget. Same in regards to page three. Expenditures beginning on page four are where we expect them to be. We don't have any accounts yet that are problematic between what's been expended and what's been encumbered. Uh, we're looking at utilizing the full budget amount. Uh, and again, uh, we don't have any budgets that appear to be in excess of what was anticipated, nor in deficit at this stage. But as you know, again, we're only 25% into the year and we haven't made it through the winter yet, which is one of the largest variables we'll deal with all year. Yeah. John, it's Kelly. Question for you relative to winter. How are we, how do we charge for the private roads? 
Are they per hour or? I don't know. I know we charge. Uh, I don't know if it's a flat fee, which I assume uh, because we generally don't have time cards or um, time sheets to show how much time is spent on per road. So my best uh, answer would be that we have an agreement we'll pay so much to cover the roads. But I'll find out and report back next meeting. Okay, thank you. Further questions from the board? Going once, going twice. There being none, we'll move on to education. Jordan, you know. Hi, good evening. Um, so uh, the September uh, statement of accounts is laid out just a little bit different than we usually see it. Um, for the September forecast, um, we what we wanted to do was um, demonstrate how the grants might cover um, the over budget conditions. So if you're looking at your green sheets, you'll see the um, kind of in the middle of the page, the September forecast. And then you'll just see how um, the two grants um, apply to the different line items. So before the grants are applied, um, we would be running at you know a seven hundred and in um, seven hundred and twenty three thousand dollar loss. Six hundred and forty of it is would be regular education, and about eighty three would be special education. After the grants are applied, we would be running over budget, roughly one hundred and twenty four thousand um, dollars. Sixty seven of it which is special education, and then 57 of it, which is regular education. Now, um, a couple of things to note are the, person, the personnel pieces of that, which is on page one of the green sheets. Um, and you'll see towards the bottom that we have custodial and maintenance salaries and bus monitors. And that's where our two biggest for over budget forecasts are. And as you already know from our last month's report that those are pandemic related expenses. The grant that is um, covering those expenses expires on December 30th. So we're only allowed to take in the grant um, those <clears throat> amounts that have been expended by December 30th. So um, even though those um, items hourly wages would be encumbered, we are not allowed to take them in the grants. So you will see that even after the application of the grant funds that there still are some losses in those line items. But um, yeah, those are made up um, by some favorable um, variances in the personnel items and in other line items. But um, that's basically the reason for the, the over budget condition. Um, our, the next biggest line item where you'll see an over budget condition, but then you see the grant applied is it on page two toward the bottom, which is the general supplies for maintenance where we expend all our PPE. Um, so that is the, uh, in a nutshell, the, uh, the, the September summary, the, um, as John had indicated also in the towns, um, regular operations are clicking along um, and it's a little early to tell whether or not we will have any variances in some of the other regular supply accounts and uh, operational accounts. So that, that is the general fund and do you want me to pause for questions before I go to revenue? Sure. Any questions, board? I guess my question would be, what's the level of confidence in terms of receiving the grants? I'll let Jordan chime in there. How are you, Al? <laughs> great, great, great question. Um, so, well, number one, everything that we're at right now is, is truly um, where we predicted it would be um, in the summer relative to the custodians relative to the PPE and the bus monitors. 
Our, our team was very strategic and, and timely in applying for these grants. And uh, we were awarded five, Anna, correct me if I'm wrong, one of the grants, $551,000. And that was something that you, you, we received the grant on a Friday, the application, and it had to have a quick turnaround by the Tuesday. And we were one of the few um, around this area that actually were awarded it. So now it's jumping through the hoop cell. And to answer your question, um, as of today, I actually feel pretty good um, because the Office of Pol Policy and Management has actually given um, districts even more flexibility. But as I shared with uh, Mr. Guarco uh, last week, um, I, until it's in my back pocket, um, I'll, I'll feel much better about it. But on paper, the, the Granby Public Schools is supposed to re receive $551,000. Thank you, Jordan. Thank you. And I, I think I hit that correct. Yep, you got it. <clears throat> and, and just to let everybody know, if when we designed this budget last year, if we didn't have COVID um, right now, um, we'd be running in the black. Um, even with a special ed deficit, we'd be running in the black because our personnel and what we did in hiring <clears throat> For this school year was less than what we predicted. Uh, Jordan, Anna, how about the smaller grant, the forty-seven thousand? Oh, yes, that that one we received confirmation that um, we received confirmation that we can draw down on that one. So we will begin that. Okay. You should know more, and by your next meeting, we should mm -hmm. know more. And once I get word, I'll reach out to the finance committee, the finance board. I better grab it while they're handing it out. Don't wait. Right. <laughs> oh, we, we were, I, I, when I say it, there's a lot of surrounding towns that look at us and say, how did we get the 551,000? And they got really nothing. Mm -hmm. Good work. Thank you. Excellent. Absolutely. You. Uh, I have a quick question. So. Thanks for letting us know that that grant expires in December and that there'll still be some expenses on the back end. And let me start by saying you guys are doing a great job managing the expenses, looking at the bottom line at the, uh, on the bottom of page three. Um, have you, has there been any indication that there are potential additional grants to possibly help offset second half of the year expenses, or I should say beginning of 2021 expenses? We don't, we don't know the exact answer to that yet, James. That, that's just the honest answer. Um, we could only hope that there will be, and if there is, uh, we will apply for them again. Um, so we're hoping that there is. Um, and if there is, we'll apply that answers to that first question. And then the, the next question that should come out is that if it just everything remains where it is and we sit, we get the grants and we're at $124,000 um, in the, the red, um, we're going to do our best to look at what we're, we're budgeting for um, and how we're looking at the, the rest of the year to try to make up that difference if we can. We know you will. Thank you. <clears throat> Further questions? Uh, Jordan, on a general basis, how's it going between um, in student, uh, out of student tuition, I mean, services and so on? Any general comments that you have as to how well our student population is responding uh, to the educational effort that you and your staff has put forth? All I can say is that our, our, the Granby community as a whole have done a tremendous job. Our K through five learners have been back since September 15th, full time. Um, we have about right now, 86% of our kids are learning in person and 14% are learning remote. And on September 21st, we brought our six to 12 students back. 
So right now, our K through five children have been going at it for about six or seven weeks and our high school and middle school kids have been going for five weeks or six weeks and our attendance for our in-person students is averaging about 96, 97% and our attendance for our remote learners are averaging about 95%. So the, 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 the teachers have done a great job. The, the parents have done a great job. Um, as we all know, um, we'll stay in it as long as we can to full in-person learning based upon the recommendation of the Farmington Valley Health District. But full well knowing that I, I, I could get a call in 20 minutes and say, we got a major problem. Um, it, it's how I spend my weekends now and how I spend my nights. So like, if I hear from one of you at night, that's a good thing. Um, if I hear from the Farmington Valley Health District or my assistant superintendent at night, it's not a good thing. Um, but our community is doing the, the best job that we can. Um, and the, the support that our team has received from the town, from the <coughs> services, eh, 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 the, the, the custodian, the main, eh, everyone has come together for mm -hmm. kids and staff to work whether it be remotely or in person. Um, I, as a superintendent of schools, I couldn't ask for it to be any better out, to be honest with you. Thank you, Jordan. Further questions? I have a question. It looks like there's two items going and same direction that looks like a non sequitur here. Out of district commission has a, de a deficit, I assume, from caseload that wasn't budgeted yet. Excess cost reimbursement is expected to be short. And I would think one would follow the other instead of going the other way. Right. Um, that's a good observation. And that um, has to do with the stop loss um, that the excess cost grant um, is, is predicated from. So uh, that, that formula is four and a half, anything four and a half times the cost, um, the excess of that is covered. So what's yeah. happening is um, we're hitting up against that stop loss. And it's quite a conundrum, Mike, because um, as you try to save money by combining transportation and and do doing all those you know cost saving measures, and you're saving um, money on each individual placement, as you dip below that stop loss, then the state is covering less of the cost, right? So even though we're over up about 141,000. Um, the individual students are not meeting the stop loss. Um, it's kind of a familiar situation for us, but um, this this year it's it's a little bit more pronounced. Okay, thank you. <clears throat> Other questions? Uh, there being none, we'll move on to the next item. Special appropriations number four on the agenda is considering additional appropriation from solid waste sanitation fund to household hazardous waste collection. John. Thank you, Mike. I'm requesting uh, 15,000 approval to take $15,000 from the solid waste fund. That will be used to pay for the hazardous waste collection days we participate in with neighboring towns. We have three events, one of which just occurred last week. Uh, the contract, the prior contract had expired. They renegotiated. The cost of disposing of the hazardous waste has gone up. Uh, so Kirk has requested additional funds to cover the loss. 
Uh, Board of Selectmen approved this at their meeting last Monday night. Uh, there is money in the fund to cover it. This appropriation is within the established uses of this fund. And let's see. Okay, the balance after this, if approved, would be $345,000. So there's sufficient so, funds for it. So this, John, this is the additional cost? Yes. Okay, so you have money within the original budget, but because of the change in the pricing, whatever, to make this happen for the three different dates, it's another 15,000 on top of what's in the budget. Yes. Okay. Questions from the board? John, having used the service, uh, the last one, um, the line was, even according to the people working there, exceptionally long, I waited an hour. Not, not that I'm angry about that, but, and there was still another two miles of cars behind me. Are we charged, is it a flat rate? Because they take your name and address from the town you're in. Do they bill back by, by use or just this is what it's going to cost Randy for the year? I honestly don't know, Bill. I'll find out, though. Unfortunately, I don't have Kirk on the line tonight. Um, so I don't know if it's a per use fee or a flat fee. If you want to hold this till I find out next month, that's fine. No, I'm, I'm curious because I, I think that if it's on a per usage basis, people are cleaning stuff out that they haven't had time to clean out. And so our fee may be higher if it's on a per person basis, but not to hold up the transfer. You've got me curious as well. So I'll find out and I'll report. Uh, John, back. yeah, you can just email the response out to us. That's all. Okay. That's good enough. Further questions from the board? Just a comment, uh, John, I've used the service several times and I'm very, very impressed how they handle it in Simsbury. Works very, very well, although the car lineup is is substantial typically, so. Thank you, Al. Unless there's further comment, a motion would be in order. I propose a motion that the Board of Finance authorize additional appropriation of $15,000 from the Solid Waste Sanitation Fund balance to fund the household hazardous waste collection. Is there a second? A second. Thank you. Second, third, fourth. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed? None. Extensions? None. Motion carries. Next item. Okay. Budget amendment, additional appropriation for capital for a police cruiser. John? Yes. Uh, unfortunately, recently, one of the police cruisers was in a motor vehicle accident, which resulted in the vehicle being deemed totaled by Kerma, the uh, insurance company that insures the town. As a result, uh, they will pay 18,000 towards uh, the cost of replacing the cruiser. Uh, Chief Rosenzweig is going to use his capital funds for new cruisers to pay the difference. Uh, new cruiser uh, costs approximately $23,000. And that, I'm not positive, I think that's the figure off the lot. So then you do have to add in the cost to put on okay. the accessories, the uh, roll bars, the cage, and the lights. Um, but he will take that out of his capital funds. 
So I would request that um, this motion be approved and this way we'll get a cruiser back on the road. Questions from the board? John, were any of our personnel injured in this accident? No. At least Thank as far as work, there's no workers' comp claim related to this. Hmm. Further questions? Not as for a motion. I would move that the Board of Finance approves increases in the miscellaneous revenue and police and administrative vehicles line items and capital equipment slash improvement fund budget by eighteen thousand eight hundred eighty nine dollars and sixty cents. Second. Those in favor, aye. 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 Opposed, none. Entry. carries. Information. <clears throat> John, thank you. I see you've submitted the information from Bill Glick, the town of Middlefield. Yes. Uh, quick look at uh, some of the other years. One thing I noticed over the last three years, our grand list is up, I think, three and a half. Theirs is up. 7.98, something like that, um, which obviously helps in flattening the mill rate. Three years ago, I need to make a call to see exactly what happened because the in Revel, the value of the list went up uh, about 18, 20%, but the rate only dropped 3%, not even. So it makes sense. Kind of do the same thing, similar magnitudes. So it makes for some interesting reading and comparisons. I know it's a regional school system and uh, there's a half million dollar drop in education, which a year ago I spoke with the finance director down there. Well, in fact, the drop of enrollment to the paying X amount per kid went in their favor and with uh, Durham picking up more of the bill from Middlefield. So uh, more to look at. Um, I expect to spend a little more time looking through it and making a call or two. But, um, some interesting things that uh, now, if we had that kind of grand list growth, we would have had no increase in no rate for the last three, four years, too. But that's not the way it is. The date of the next meeting would look to be uh, November 23rd. Anybody expect to not be here that date? If so, we could roll it to the fifth Monday, which is November 30th. If not, we'll leave it for the 23rd. In that case, I'd ask for a motion to adjourn. I make a motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? None. Abstentions? None. Motion carries. Half hour meeting. Thank you all. <laughs> Fantastic.